What's it like to study Japanese for a week, fly to Japan, and travel the country alone? If you watched my last video, you've already seen me struggle with the language, make countless mistakes, and end up in some uncomfortable situations. But it's also led to some incredible experiences. The goal of this series is to share the harsh realities of traveling a foreign country alone, the highs and the lows, and give some advice to anyone even the slightest bit interested in doing something similar. In this video I'll explore some new cities, hang out with monkeys, try to make a friend, and stay in one of the most unique hotels of my life. The day started off with a train ride to Arashiyama, a district on the western outskirts of Kyoto that has a bucket list activity I'd been dying to check out. I feel like I'm finally getting the hang of public transportation at this point. Slowly but surely I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with the uncomfortable and just figuring it out as I go. One of the best parts of traveling alone is you get to decide what to do every minute of the day. There's no debate, no compromising. If you want to try something totally unique, you just go and do it. So when I saw there was a monkey park an hour from my hotel, I knew I had to check it out. Ichi? I didn't know I'd have to go on a bit of a hike to get there. I'm excited, this should be really cool. Only 600 yen to get in, which is about $4 US, which is not bad at all. Hi there. Oh, this is so cool just walking around with monkeys. <laughs> Juicy fruit. That was the cutest thing I've ever seen. I, know. I think I just exploded. I don't know a less cheesy way to put it. My heart is beyond full right now. That was just the cutest thing. I got like tingles in me. I think that's my favorite thing I've done on this trip so far and it's interesting because it wasn't like easy to find. I think it was like number 12 on a list of things to do but at least for me that was just such a cool experience. The temples are amazing but they do get a little bit repetitive. I don't necessarily understand all the history or the culture but monkeys? Well I get monkeys. Arashiyama is a little more rural than the rest of Kyoto primarily known for its temples and beautiful bamboo grove. I spent a few hours exploring and taking it all in until I stopped for lunch where something bizarre happened. Herring udon, let's put aside. Hi. <laughs> when I sat down, I saw another solo traveler I'd talked to for probably 10 minutes the night before, the only reason being we took pictures of each other and we somehow ended up at the same restaurant at the same time in a totally different part of the city. No idea what the odds of that happening are, but we ended up eating lunch together, giving each other recommendations, and it felt really good to have a meaningful conversation with someone for the first time in days. What's your favorite part about solo traveling? I can decide how long I'm staying in place, uh, where to go, and then just enjoying my time. Yeah, just enjoying my life, enjoying my time through the world. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, with any luck, I'll run into you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just see you again. All right, see you later. Yeah, see you later. I never imagined I'd get to know anyone on this trip, and I couldn't help but think how it only happened because I was traveling alone. I've shown a lot of highlights from the trip so far, but that's far from the reality of solo travel. Every cool experience seemed to be followed by me making a dumb mistake. I really don't know where I am. I think I went a kilometer in the exact wrong direction. No one would catch my mistakes or help me with decisions, and over time that became pretty fatiguing. And because this was a once in a lifetime trip, I felt this immense pressure to do as much as possible every day. While that made the trip super fun, spending every night hunched over my laptop figuring out where to go in the morning, what to do, how to get there, was exhausting. So just ignore the bags under my eyes the following morning. This was originally supposed to be my last night at this hotel I was going to have to check out this morning, but I really don't want to deal with moving luggage somewhere else. I'm visiting Nara today, which is, I think, less than an hour by train, so I booked it for another night. I really like this place. 
I knew very little about Nara, just that there was one specific park I wanted to visit and that everyone online said it was worth a day trip. But it turned out to be one of the most interesting and unique cities I've ever been to. I'm really starting to enjoy the public transportation system. It was definitely overwhelming at first, but I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. And it's super convenient, just a fun way to see the cities. Anyways, first stop of the day is Nara Park. I read online that Nara Park had some deer you could feed. If you couldn't tell, I really like animals, so I figured I'd start off there before exploring the rest of the city. It wasn't hard to find. Oh, the deer are just walking around already. That's so fun. Ichi? Oh, we got one closing in. There you go. It started off as a super wholesome activity, but within minutes they had me surrounded. I might be gathering a herd. <laughs> These two are following me. Whoa, hey, hey. <laughs> this guy's eating my butt. Come on. You getting some good shots? Oh, yeah. One of yeah. them was just, he was just nipping at my jacket. He's like, yeah. no, you're just going to yeah. give it to me. One was like, he know he knew I had these cookies and then like attacked me like, try to eat my ass. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. he was doing. He yeah. was grabbing me right there. Yeah. Let him uh, bow for you three times. Oh, look at that. That's ah. so cool. All right, three bells. One, two. Oh, good job. See, that's how you get it. Stuff like this is just too much fun for me. It's little moments like this where I'd totally forget I was alone. Even if it's just for 15 minutes, it surprised me how easy it was to share an experience with someone I didn't know and would probably never see again. And that's definitely something I'd recommend while solo traveling. Whether it's starting a conversation with a stranger or trying something new, always push yourself a little outside your comfort zone because that's what you'll remember from the trip more than anything else. Alright, I've worked up an appetite. I'm getting really hungry. I'm making it sort of a goal to try something new to eat every day. A lot of the times that's multiple things. It's kind of fun because sometimes you get really lucky and you find some incredible food and other days it's less good. Ichi yo kudasai. Alright, let's give it a shot. Mm. Mm. It's pretty good. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I never escape the deer. They literally run this town. The sidewalks, the walkways, the temples, it's not just a small fenced in area, you can't get away from them. This is my food. <laughs> Hi, you can't eat this. Nara was perfect for a day trip and I ended my day enjoying some delicious Ichiran Ramen, which is a famous restaurant chain throughout Japan. It was a totally different vibe to what I'd experience next. So for no real reason other than I just felt like it, I just booked tomorrow's night at a capsule hotel. Over the past couple days, I've really gotten more comfortable with just trying things, whether that's going to a location and not really knowing what to expect, or ordering food and not really knowing what it is. I'm just getting a lot more comfortable with the unknown, and I'm excited to try just one more new thing. I just realized the total came out to 4,750 yen, which converts to only about $32 USD, so pretty cheap. Expectations are not very high, but it's going to be an experience. Leaving my hotel and traveling to a new city always made me a little anxious. I'd made plenty of mistakes traveling up until this point, and when I least expected it, I'd make a complete fool of myself. Ohayou gozaimasu. Uh, Nyomotsu no Oroshi? Luggage Wholesaler uh, I can't even watch that back, I cringe so hard. I meant to say luggage drop-off, I don't even know where that came from. Unsurprisingly, we finished the conversation in English. That definitely could have gone better. As soon as I got up to the counter, I got kind of nervous and flustered, but all is well. I guess part of that goes into the difference between traveling solo versus traveling with people. When you're traveling alone... <laughs> Hello. Hello! When you're traveling alone, it's always a little bit more of an adventure. Everything has a little bit of discomfort, you make mistakes, it's not always fun, but it keeps you on edge, keeps you learning, keeps you growing, versus when you're traveling with a group, it's a lot more of a vacation. 
You've got other people to pick up the slack. I'm very much more engulfed in everything right now. I'd never make the argument that traveling alone is more fun than doing it with your best friends, but I wouldn't say it isn't either. It's difficult, sometimes awkward, and even the simplest of tasks feel like an adventure. And that's something I'd never experienced with the safety net of a group. Japan is a beautiful country full of incredibly kind people, and the longer I was there, the more I learned that it was okay to make mistakes. Alright, I'm gonna drop by the capsule hotel real quick, drop a few things off, and try to give you a little tour before it's like 8 p.m. and people are actually trying to sleep in there. I'm so curious to see what the inside looks like. So I guess... That's where I'm sleeping tonight. Well, there's maybe seven, seven and a half feet by... Uh, four feet? It's decently roomy, for sure. Looks like you got chargers, an alarm, that's nice. Clock, calendar, there's a lamp, there's ventilation. Lights back there as well for the bed lamp. And it looks like there's a dimmer for that. Overall, it seems pretty cozy. I finished up the day in Shinsaibashi, which is Osaka's main shopping area. It made anywhere I've ever been look like a joke. Restaurant after restaurant, store after store. At one point, I just stumbled upon a 14-story mall. I think this might be the craziest shopping area I've ever seen. It just keeps going. Traveling around Japan was the number one, unquestionably most incredible place I've ever been. Every little thing made me giddy. I'm heading up to the capsule. I don't know why I said it like that. At times it was hard, I didn't know what I was doing, and I needed help. But throughout the entire trip, I was shown nothing but kindness. Uh, matcha, matcha. Oh, yeah. gozaimasu! I've missed a lot of opportunities in my life, and usually it boils down to fear. I'm afraid of trying something difficult, afraid of failing, and I'm terrified of what people think of me. Every time I think I've conquered that one, it slowly creeps up on me again. But my newest fear is the fear of missing out. The fear of not doing things because a voice in my head says it'll be uncomfortable. Discomfort sucks in the short term, but it pushes us to grow, to chase down the life we want, and become stronger versions of ourselves. It's the price of admission for the most incredible experiences in life. <laughs> 